Hi everyone, welcome to the Lace Up YouTube channel. Today we're going to be discussing how to create an inventory part. More specifically, I'm going to show you how distributors that we work with create and manage their inventory parts in QuickBooks. So what is an inventory part? An inventory part is an item that you purchase from a vendor and sell to a customer. You use an inventory part when you want to track inventory or quantities on hand of a product in your warehouse. To create an inventory part, you go to lists, item list. To create an inventory part, you have two options. You can either right click on the screen and click new, or you can go down here to the item menu at the bottom and click new. Both actions do the same thing. Once you get into the item creation screen, you have a couple options. We're obviously going to select inventory part. The first thing that we want to fill out is the item name. The item name is going to be a reference to the item or a code of the item. So let's say code number one, two, three. We're going to call it item A. This is so that when we're creating a transaction, we can easily pull up the item and add it to an invoice, a purchase order, an item receipt, etc. Down here in the sales information section, we're going to type in the description for the inventory part. This description is going to print on the invoice. In the description, you want to include the pack and the size of the item, something like this. So let's say item A is packing 12 and they're each eight ounces. This would be a traditional sales description for one of our distributors. You also want to fill out the purchase description. The purchase description is what you're going to see on purchase transactions, such as purchase orders, bills and item receipts. Next, you want to fill out the cost. This is the cost that you pay for the item to your vendor. Let's say it's $1. Following the cost, we want to populate the sales price. In the sales price, we're going to type in what we sell the product to our customers for. So let's say that's $250. Next, we're going to select our cost of goods sold account. That's where the cost of your product is going to post in your accounting or accounts ledger. Okay. Anytime you run a profit and loss or any type of report, the cost of goods sold will represent the cost or the aggregate cost of the items that you've sold. Next, you want to select an income account. An income account reflects your sales. So when you sell an item, let's say you sell one of this item, $2.50 will post to your sales account. $1 will post to your cost of goods sold. This will create a profit of $1.50. Next, you want to select your preferred vendor. In this instance, I don't have a preferred vendor, so I'm going to create one. And lastly, we want to fill in the inventory information. First and foremost, the inventory asset account. This will take into account the total value of the inventory that you have on hand. The reorder point. This is the point that takes into account lead time for a vendor to send you the product so that you, and from the time they send the product to the time you receive the product in your warehouse. The max is the max quantity on hand that you want to have for a given product at any time. The on hand is what you currently have in your warehouse. Let's say I have 50 of these. So if you look, the system automatically multiplied the on hand times the cost to give me a total value of my product. And the as of is the inventory as of this date. Now to save the inventory part, we want to hit OK. 
Here's the inventory part. Now there is one important component that we didn't cover and that is a UPC code. There are a couple ways to do the UPC code. In this scenario, we're gonna cover how to create a custom field for the item called UPC. So we simply type in UPC, use, and here's a field for our UPC code. We can also enable barcodes, which I'll show you in another video, for the same purpose. When I'm done, I tap OK, OK, and there's my created item in my item list. Thank you for watching this tutorial from LaceUp. For more tutorials, subscribe to our channel by clicking down below. Thank you and see you next time.